there's a book that I have in there. I dropped it quickly. I want to show you this book. I wrote this book some years ago. And I'm going to be teaching along these lines tonight. The Lord led me along this line. I was really trusting God as it related to tonight's message. And I really believe God, that God has something in store for us for the year 2009, the year of total transformation. Somebody say amen. It is our year of total transformation. Tell somebody that. It's our year of total transformation. Year of total, total. Somebody say total. Total, you know, Americans call it total. I say I'm from Nigeria. I say total. Aha, total. Uh -huh. total. Everywhere. Somebody say amen. Open your Bibles with me today to Proverbs chapter 20 and also quickly with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to share some things with us today on how to change your own world. Once you start to talk about transformation, you are talking about change. Is that not all right? Once you say transformation, you are talking about change. You cannot talk about transformation without the concept of change. Transformation connects with the whole concept of change. So once we're dealing with transformation, there's got to be some dimension of change that has to come our way somebody say amen change has to come our way if it's transformation then it's connected to change first corinthians chapter 2 when you do find it say amen in first corinthians chapter 2 the bible says i think it's from about verse 9 of it begins to say some things that god was sharing to us through the apostle paul and this is what he said he said but as it is written i had not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god had prepared for them that love him he said but god had revealed them to us by his spirit he said for the spirit such at all things yea the deep things of god he said, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him? He said, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. I want you to pay special attention to verse 11, where he said, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man that is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. If you turn with me quickly to Proverbs chapter 20, and just hold your place in Proverbs 20, and we're going to come back in there. Father, as we get into your word, we ask that you open the eyes of our understanding. That we would behold wondrous things out of your law. You are going to lift us even to a higher level. This new year that we are getting into, it shall indeed stand and represent a dimension of transformation for us. We would indeed be transformed. You would touch every aspect of our lives. We would be lifted. Your purpose shall be accomplished in our lives in the mighty name of Lord Jesus and the people of God say what? Amen. Amen. Now look at verse 24 of Proverbs chapter 20. It says in the man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man understand his own way? Now I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that there's an aspect of our life that is completely secret or hidden to everybody else. There is something about us that nobody else knows. Even if that person is married to us or so called the closest friend that we have, there's an aspect of our lives that is only open to almighty God. And there is nothing anybody can do to come into that or be able to gain any kind of entrance into that place unless we actually open it up to the person or God Almighty reveals an aspect of that to the individual. I call this our world, your own personal world. There is a world that is only real to you. Nobody has any access to it. They don't have the key to it. There is nothing that they can do. They can go to all the Obia men in this world. They can try it anyhow they will never gain access into that. Even your spouse is not able to gain access into it unless you reveal it. Are you following what I'm talking about? Or God Almighty reveals it to the person. Bible said that no man knows the things of a man save the spirit of the man that is inside the man. And so also nobody knows the things of God except the spirit of God. And we read here in Proverbs chapter 20 verse 24. He said man's goings are of the Lord. I said how can a man then understand his own ways? Now if me as an individual even my own in my own world i don't understand everything in it what makes you think that you are going to understand it if me as an individual 
I don't even understand every aspect of my own world. Because Bible says in there, said man's goings are of the Lord. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man understand his own way? He said, even me as an individual, I don't have a full understanding of every aspect of my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? How will somebody else then have that understanding? Are you following what I'm talking about? And child of God, you need to understand that there is this aspect of your life that is absolutely hidden or absolutely secret. Usually, whenever you start using the word secret, people begin to think about sin. You know, once you say there's something secret, the, very, the first thing that comes to the mind of people is that what sin did he commit? Or what sin did she commit? Child of God, it has nothing to do with sin. We're talking about the fact that your life is sealed by God. And God does it because, number one, he wants to protect you from the devil because the devil does not know everything some people think that the devil knows everything as though the devil is omnipresent and omniscient he is not omnipresent he's not omniscient he does not know everything about you somebody said well they, there was this witch or this wizard that knows certain things about me child of god there's something we call familiar spirits the same way neighbors around you know some things about you therefore some other people will know some stuff about you and some evil spirits can know some things about you but they don't know everything about you. They don't. There's no way they can. So God conceals this aspect of your life. Basically to protect you. Another reason why God does it is that God wants you to stay unique. That you are a unique individual. There's nobody like you. People will have to need your help to understand you. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? And child of God, you are uniquely special to Almighty God. There is no other you on the face of the earth. And nobody can be you like you. Say amen somebody. Nobody on the face of the earth has the right to be you like you. And also God uses this to protect you. From folks so that your life is not just an open book for everybody to read. There are many people who have committed suicide today simply because they believe everybody knows everything about them. And therefore they can't handle it anymore and all that kind of stuff and they just go ahead and take their own life. Child of God, I want you to understand that God has sealed you. There is an aspect of your life that nobody they can do what they had like, say what they like. They will never gain access to it unless you reveal it to them or unless God reveals it to them. Are you following what I'm talking about? And it's, somebody said, that's good. So some of you, you are finally being relaxed now. Now you're relaxed. Hi, Chai. I thought everybody knew. Oh, I thought, I thought all of them knew. Now you're relaxed. Are you following what I'm saying? You know, there are some people who tell you, well, the Bible said, all the things that are hidden shall be revealed. Let me explain something to you. What shall be hidden that is going to be revealed is how you walked. So that you can get your reward. You think we are going to be in heaven. And know all the bad, 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 bad things that you did. You think that's what God has time for. To waste our time. Have all of us line up in heaven. And we're waiting for our judgment. Now let me see. How many bad, bad things have you done? Okay. You did this. You did that. Now you're gone. Child of God, leave that. Those are for drama. And those are for things that people do on stage. That is not what the Bible teaches. Somebody say amen. amen. That doesn't teach that. And you need to appreciate that. Bible does not teach that. Now, the problem a lot of the times is that this world, this world of ours, many times what happens is that it's filled with all kinds of stuff. Bible says in there, no man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of the man that is inside that man. Nobody knows the spirit of a man. When it said the things of a man, in the original Greek, the word there that is used for the things of a man, speak about the intrinsic value of the person. Many of us, we judge people on the outside. We look at them on the outside. We make our judgment about them. But child of God, God is saying that the real value of the man is not what you see on the outside. The real value of the man, no other human being can gain access to it. Are you getting what I'm talking about? The real value. He said nobody knows the things. The real intrinsic value of that person saves the spirit of the man. And that is why a lot of people sometimes they are going through. They, they are in a lot of trouble, a lot of damage, but they come outside and they smile for everybody. But while they are smiling with you, all kind of pressure is affecting them. All kinds of things are going on in their real world. And child of God, what we want in this new year of transformation is that your real world become transformed. 
the real you, the inside you, that God will do something on the inside of you that will transform the real you. And people could say what they want about you. But as long as God does something about the real you, your life will never be the same again. Somebody say amen. The real you is what's important to God. God wants to do something with the real you. You are a spirit. You are not just flesh and blood. You go beyond flesh and blood. You are a spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? Created in the very image and likeness of Jehovah God. What happens to us a lot of times is that this world of ours sometimes is filled with a lot of tragedy. And we need to be able to turn it around. That's the whole concept of transformation. That you can change that real world of yours. And I want you to realize this. If you're going to change it, there are some basic things that you have to know. There are just some things you cannot do away with. Number one, you need, you need to recognize that God is not responsible for the tragedy that is happening in that world. No matter what it is. It doesn't matter what is happening there. God is not the one who caused it. You need to understand that the Bible says that the thief cometh not, but for to steal and kill and destroy. But I am come, said Jesus, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So he came for you to have life. Whatever trouble you are having in your world that nobody else knows anything about, you need to start from the place that God did not cause that problem. And something else you need to know. No human being caused that problem either. You need to understand that there is no human being born of a woman. If they drop from the moon, maybe. No human being is big enough to destroy your destiny. They don't have that. They, no, God has not given any human being that privilege. Are you following what I'm talking? They can call you anything, say anything about you, carry any room on you, do you all kinds of stuff. They can never change your destiny. No human being. No human being has that privilege. And for so long, you have been focusing on human beings that you think are the ones that have destroyed your life. Wasting your time. Transformation is about you beginning to understand that no human being. I was telling somebody yesterday, a police officer, I, I, you know, something happened and he realized I didn't shake. You know, he thought I, it, whatever took place would have rattled me. I said, listen to me very carefully. As long as it has body, B-O-D-Y, whether it's spiritual or natural, once you call it body, if it has body, I don't fear it. Did you hear what I just said? That's the, the cowards die many times before their before their time. What once it has body, B O D Y, whether that body is natural or whether it is spiritual, David Okechukwi Beleme fred it not. Did you hear what I just said? Fred it not. Once it has body, are you following me here? You can't kill a dead man. I'm dead already. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We were crucified with Christ. Died already. What, what, what are you going to be afraid of death for again? So once he has body. I said my body is trained. Every cell in my body is trained to relax itself. No matter what is panicking people out there. Something out, drop. Brrr, everybody. Ah, hey, mwah, David. Okay, you be better, man. Now lie. Now wait. I will calm down. Look and see what is it. You understand what I'm talking about? What is it? Somebody said they have cooked you. Yes, Holy Ghost wise. Cooked well. Did you hear what I just said? Are you following what I'm saying? No human being has the privilege of being the one to control your life like that. No human being. Somebody said it was my father when I was three years old. When he left us. Listen to me, child of God. God is bigger than all that. You think God didn't know that that drunk was your father? Before he allowed you to come through him. He has some reason why he allowed you to come through him. Has a reason. There's something about his life. There's something about him. That made him allow him to be your father. Your natural father. Don't stay there complaining. Looking for somebody else to be your father. There's no amount of complaint you can complain. You are born already. Say amen somebody. You need to understand that. God is not your problem. And there is no human being on the face of the earth that is your problem. 
No human being. Turn around, turn to somebody and say, you are not my problem. And I promise you, as we step into this 2009, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you don't do. You are not my problem. You can never be my problem. I have bigger fish to fry. Say amen somebody. You're not my problem. I've said it before and I'll say it again. No believer, no body that is born again who has made Jesus Christ a lot of their lives is my enemy. I have no enemy in the body of Christ. No believer can be my enemy. Some of them behave like they are. Some of them don't understand it. Some of them act like they don't know. Some of them act like whatever it is. But no believer on planet called earth is my enemy. No human being has that privilege to be the one that dangles and controls like remote control. Where? Where? And you, you know the proverb we have in my place? They say the child that says that his mother will not sleep. That's why I can't sleep. How are you going to say I'm not going to sleep and you'll be sleeping? That's impossible. Impossible can't. You know what impossible can't is? It means it's possible mixed with can't. Can't happen. So you put both of them together. You get what? Impossicant. It is impossicant for you to decide that I will not rest and you will be resting. It's impossible. Impossicant. So why are you worrying yourself about human beings? Your, big, your major adversary, the Bible said that your adversary is the devil. Look beyond the human being that the devil is using. Look beyond the institution that the devil is using. Look beyond the things that the enemy is using and face the enemy. And child of God, let me explain something to you. God has given it in your hand to be able to bind him, to be able to stop him, to be able to literally don't give him any space. God gives you that privilege so there is no devil on the face of the earth either. That can stop your destiny. Tell somebody my destiny is sure. So number one thing. As it relates to changing your world. Is recognizing that God is not responsible for your tragedy. I'm only going to share about two or three of them tonight with you. Number two. Is that you must abide in the word. In the word of God. You, you see you are a product of the word. People feed on the things that their body is made of. The food you have to eat have to be the same material for the body that, that you, are, you are putting it inside. If it's not of the same material, then it will destroy your body or poison your body. The same way, you as a spirit man, you are a product of the word of God. Jesus said in John chapter 15, I think it's verse 16 of it. If you can put that up, put it in there with him. John 15 verse 16. He said that I, you are, I'm the one that has called called you forth. I'm the one that has called you. I'm the one that ordained you and all that stuff. That word called, he said you have not chosen me. First of all, before he said, if you said the name that I call, he said you have not chosen me. See that word chosen? That word in the original Greek is the word eklegomai and it means to be called forth. To be spoken forth. He said, I have spoken you forth. You were not created from the dust of the earth. Your body was formed from the dust of the earth. Therefore, it feeds on things that come from the dust of the earth. Your spirit, the real you, was spoken forth. A product of the word of God. Therefore, has to feed on the very word of Jehovah God. No wonder why the Bible tells us, be not conformed to this world, but be what transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will know what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And child of God, the will of God is wrapped up in his word. Therefore, the agent of transformation is the word of Jehovah. Therefore, you have to abide in it. You can't abide in the word of other people and expect to be transformed. Yes, you will be transformed to their image. Bible says it is the word that you pay attention to. You look at the word. He said, why we look at the word, we will be changed from glory to glory. If you don't abide 
abide in the word, you are going nowhere fast. Child of God, if we are going to make our Christianity real, we have to come back into the place where we get back to basics and begin to accept that the word of God is the final arbiter in every matter concerning our lives. And not what mama said, what papa said, what uncle said, what my friend said, but what the word says. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't make decisions just on the basis of emotional, you know, frenzy. You just get into an emotional frenzy and make a decision and forget what the word of God says. There are well-meaning people, people with good intentions, who have things that they are saying that are not consistent with the word of God. Child of God, they've told us before the old adage that the road to hell is paved with so many good intentions. People with good intentions heading to hell. Child of God, the word of Jesus said, he said that this word, he said, not one jot of it will fall to the ground unfulfilled. Not one jot of it will fall to the ground. Of, how much more do you want? It is this word. Look at this same John 15. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you,